Okay, now, this capacitor checker will do a couple of things. One, it'll read the actual capacitance and, and microfarads of the uh, capacitors. But a more important test for testing old uh, beaters like these is the leakage test. And the leakage test just applies a voltage. You can set the voltage you want to apply, 25, 150, 250, or higher on this control. And then, uh, based on the amount of current, and we're talking about a tiny amount of current leaking through these, the indicator will, will show us. And you'll see as soon as I get going how this works. So let's get going. So the first capacitor I'm going to check, 0 0.005, really doesn't matter on the leakage test. What matters is the capacitor's voltage rating, which is quite high, 600 volts. So I don't have to worry about that. So we'll set this over to 25 volts. You'll see the eye is open. When I click the leakage test button there, That'll apply the voltage. For a moment, you'll see the eye close, and then it should open again. If it opens just like this, the capacitor is good at that voltage. If it doesn't open, it's because of leakage. Here we go. So you see it open. I'll try again. Open quickly at 25 volts. Okay, slower, 150. I've done this on a lot of capacitors now. 250. So. You know, this capacitor, it leaks a little bit. It's not terrible, though. So with a low leakage, we can take a reading of its capacitance. Now, it's supposed to be 0 0.005, so that's right here. So I'll adjust this dial and watch for the eye to pop open. You see it there? That's coming across on the uh, screen very well, like interfering with the light there. Let's try it this way. So it doesn't actually pop open. It tries hard right in this range, right around the 0 .005. Uh, the leakage is making this test uh, not work, the actual reading of the capacitance. So. so let's just stick with the leakage test. That's all we'll do on these. Compare them that way. So first one, so-so. Okay, next one on the leakage test here. Please. I don't mess up the camera shot too much. There we are, so 25 volts. Pretty similar to the last one. Better than the last one. Okay, we're up to 350 volts. Better watch my fingers here. So this capacitor is actually testing very, very good. Oh, since there's no leakage, let's go ahead and test the capacitance. 0 0.005, same as the last one. 0 0.005. Okay, and again, the eye is not popping wide open. The reading is in exactly the same place. A good capacitor, the eye will pop wide open on a test like that. So, so far, one so so, one pretty good. A pretty good one, there was probably no advantage to changing it out. Somebody could argue, well, it's going to fail. Well, you know what, if it's gotten this far in life, it's probably going to go a lot further yet. So, here we go 25 volts leakage. Ah. Low to open. 150. So now this one's leaking much worse. And look at the condition of it. Oh, over here. And it's much easier to see this with, with your own eyes. But uh, so now this one showed no leakage, virtually no leakage. It's in really good looking shape. This one looks more beat up. You can rely on a visual examination of these capacitors. My experience has been some really ugly ones test good and some really good looking ones test bad. So here we go, 25 volts on the next one. Good. 150. Okay, 250. Yeah. 
So again, it's not too bad. This tester is not very forgiving. A tiny amount of leakage can really show up here. Let's put on the next guy here. Start at 25 volts. That reminds me, I have my phone in here. Uh oh. my phone interfere, interferes with video, so I hope that hasn't happened. Let's go back in. 25 volts. Good. 150. Slow. 250. It won't open. It's just opening. Now the problem with this radio was it was a humming, like humming terribly. I'm pretty sure that's from lack of power supply filtering, and that's because of these these last two capacitors, which we're going to get to. So those guys were probably causing the problem. All these ones seem to be serviceable. Here we go, 25 volts. Look at this one, three up to 350, and it's testing just fine. No more reason to go higher. This one, this is this one looked really ugly in the radio. The, the paper sleeve had slid down on it. Some wax appears to have bubbled out here. It's terrible looking. Let's see what happens. volts. A little slow. 150. Still going. 250. Look at this. 350. Let's, let's, let's give it the works. 450. for a minute. When, they, when I let go of this control, a short is applied across the capacitor to discharge it. So I'm just going to give it a moment because I put it up to 450. Okay. So, surprise, surprise. This ugly molded capacitor. Hey, let's check its value. Let's check its value. It's supposed to be 0.05. I would have I bet money that this capacitor was shot. There's the 0.05. Whoops. There's the 0.05 and there's the reading. So it's actually a reading, you know, within the accuracy of this machine, which I have not calibrated, so I don't even know how accurate it is. <laughs> this capacitor, ugly as can be, perfectly serviceable. Wow, I replaced a lot of capacitors that were actually not bad. And that's why I don't rush into capacitor replacement, by the way. A lot of guys will just immediately replace all the capacitors. These I've seen it done in the, you know 1980s stereo equipment and stuff like that. And wow, I, I don't know. To me, it's it's you know, unless there's an indication or or some real reason behind it. In this case, you know, it doesn't take long and it's cheap, so it's not the end of the world to have replace these. Here we go, 25 volts. Slow coming back. That's a fair size capacitor though. Physically large capacitor. Yeah, just coming open on that. 150 volts. So this big guy is leaky. Leakier. I mean, you know, physically large capacitor. There's a lot more surface to leak inside of a bigger capacitor. Is it 
serviceable? I don't know for sure. Now, this is electrolytic. We want to make sure we hook it up with proper polarity here. Electrolytics are leaky from the start. So this device has another setting. I click that switch. Now it's recalibrated the eye more suitably to checking leakage in the electrolytic capacitor. So here we go, 25. 150, 250, and 350. What's the rating on this capacitor here? The rating is 150. Ooh, okay, let's not go to 350. 150. Seems pretty good. Uh, it's supposed to be 24 microfarads, 24, that's a big guy. Just letting it discharge for a bit here. 24, 24. Turn it in here. I think this should be way up here. There's the 50. There's the 10. So that puts, you know, 24 in this area here. Nothing. I get it. it the eye opens way down here, but that's... I don't think that's uh, reliable. Make sure it's connected. Well... much leakage, but it didn't seem to show any capacitance. Now this one, 16 at 150. 16. So without testing its leakage, uh, maybe I've got a problem here with, uh, oh, okay, we're getting a reading right in there, and that's at Five, six, seven, around eight. This is reading around eight. Let's check it for leakage now. Twenty-five volts. One fifty volts. That's its rating. One fifty. Well, you know the humming in the radio would suggest that one or both of these two electrolytic capacitors were shot. And my test here, hmm, this one I can't seem to read the capacitance on it. Now this one seems to be a little low in capacitance according to the test. Neither one of these seem to be leaking terribly for an electrolytic capacitor based again on the test here in my shop. So, what's the lesson here? What's the lesson here? It's, I am doing my best to learn stuff while I'm working in my shop. The lesson is, once again, don't assume that all capacitors are bad just because they're old. Um, I've certainly had a few dramatic experiences, dra uh, dramatic is not the right word, but where I've had extremely old radios and the capacitors are still okay in them. Um, you know, the capacitance has a little bit to do with just the physical positioning of the plates in the capacitor. The material in between is an important component, but it's not the only thing. The physical position of the plates doesn't change uh, appreciably over the life of the capacitor. So that still uh, creates or enables a certain amount of capacitance, as I understand it anyway. Yeah, the material is extremely important. The dielectric material is extremely important, but uh, there we go. Anyway, hey, I think it might be time to start this uh, radio up.